3D, it's a fantastic technology, it's something that blows us all away when we watch a 3D film, especially in the cinema. You get that cinematic experience, and that is now being transitioned into the home through the likes of 3D screens, which are becoming more and more common. However, one of the major drawbacks has always been the fact that you've got to wear some form of glasses to really benefit from the 3D experience. But now on the likes of mobile technology, such as smartphones and the Nintendo DS, you can experience 3D without glasses. So glasses-free 3D displays. Now at the moment, the big limitation with these is that these 3D screens are only available in small sizes. They can't make them in the size of 42s and 50 inches that we want on our homes, or in our homes on the wall. Uh, to enjoy that cinematic experience in our own homes. But they are now appearing on mobile devices. The LG Optimus 3D and the HTC Evo 3D are just two examples. Of course there is the Nintendo DS and I think over time we'll see more devices uh, adopting this screen technology. But the thing is, is it really any good? I personally think at the moment 3D displays are a little bit of a gimmick. Personally, I wouldn't buy a 3D screen for my home, and I don't think I'd buy one on a smartphone. And there are several reasons for this. 3D technology is evolving, it's still in its infancy, and we do need people to try and test it, to push it forward. However, I don't think you get the same experience that you might if you were in a cinema. I like going to the cinema for a 3D experience. You get that cinema experience, you get more effects, it feels great to you with more people, you get that sort of taking deep breaths and that shock as things come out of you at the screen, from the screen. You get that at home, but one of the limitations again with that is if you've got a 3D telly, you probably only get a couple of pairs of glasses, so you have to invest quite a lot of money in getting additional glasses should you want to share that 3D film with several people. And it's a little bit the same on the likes of the smartphones, or super phones as really you should be badging them. So the Evo 3D and the LG 3D both have 3D displays and you will sit there with your phone, take a picture, view a movie in 3D and go, wow, this is pretty impressive. But for how long for? For a lot of the features and everyday uses of that phone, you can't use the 3D function. You don't want to look at your calendar in 3D. You don't need to see your contacts in 3D. The concept might sound great, but do you really need to do that? The big drawbacks of battery life. The more features, the more it eats the battery. And 3D is a prime example of that affecting battery life. And I think I've read reports that the LG 3D will last only three or four hours if you're fully utilizing the 3D uh, mode on there. So does the HTC Evo 3D bring anything different? Well, from initial impressions, no. They do blow you away. It's a great thing to show your friends and family. I haven't yet shown a device, the Evo 3D or the LG 3D, to someone who hasn't gone, wow. But what they have done is they've looked at the devices and go, why though? Why would I need that? Why do I want it? I'm unlikely to take 3D pictures. The concept's good, I can try it out, that looks fantastic. I've taken that image there but I can't really share it with anyone. Now for people who've got 3D tellies at home, that's fine because you can then share that content. But how many of you have 3D tellies? You can transfer the files to your computer, but you can't view it on that unless you've got some clever 3D screen hooked up to it. So the reality is that whilst 3D exists on smartphones, you can't really utilize it to its full effect. If you wanna watch a movie, on your phone. That's all fine and well and many people do. But 3D movies, you now got to compress them and get them onto your phone. Is that going to be more hassle than it's actually worth? You used to do it with your 2D movies, but with your 3D, will you bother? Who knows? Of course digital downloads will help, so you can now download them through like the HTC watch service. But I'm still not convinced at this time. And I've found a lot of people who've used the LG or the HTC Evo 3D have also had trouble with the screen in terms of it makes them feel a bit wheezy, a bit sick.
because the screen is essentially playing tricks on your eyes to see the image in 3D. Now, I'm not criticising 3D. I think it's fantastic. But I'm a little bit concerned they brought 3D to the market a little bit too early. Consumers aren't ready for it. If we look at the sales of 3D tellies, they're not on the up as many analysts or manufacturers would actually like them to be. And especially in economically hard times that we're currently in, are people going to pay the extra for a 3D display? That's a brilliant showcase for manufacturers such as LG and HTC, especially LG as they were the first ones to produce a 3D screen. But whilst it's a brilliant showcase, is it worth investing all that money into the smartphone when no one is quite ready to adopt it yet? Now I know there are some of you out there that are real tech savvy, you want the latest and greatest things, I'm totally not knocking that. I think it's fantastic that people like you are what makes technology interesting. You push forward uh, the bounds of technology and make manufacturers try new things. But you've also got to think about, if you take your LG 3D or your Evo 3D, it's physically thicker and heavier than the likes of another HTC, a Sensation, an LG Optimus 2X. And you're paying a price for that 3D, not only in terms of the monetary value, but the physical size of the device. Now, for a lot of people, that may not matter because you want a phone that does something. But for... Joe Bloggs on the street, who currently may have his iPhone, may have a feature phone. Would they upgrade? They can see the benefits of the smartphone. They can see the benefits of the brand and some of the things that the device does over and above their current phone. But when they look at the physical size, which is important, is the extra thickness, the extra weight going to make a difference? Are they going to turn away from it? I think so. So there's a little bit of work for manufacturers to do uh, on the devices, get them thinner, get them uh, lighter. But the ultimate question is, are we ready for 3D? My personal thoughts, and this doesn't reflect Chloe, is that we're not quite ready for 3D. And I'd be really interested to hear your feedback as to whether you think we are. How many of you own a 3D telly? And if you do own a 3D telly, how many of you use, you use the 3D facility of the telly, say more than once a week. I'd even argue that some of you use it less than once a month. You may have used it three or four times when you got the telly, but you're now six months, 12 months into owning that TV. Do you still use it? And if you do have an LG 3D or an Evo 3D, how much do you use the 3D content actually on the device? How many times do you access that 3D menu on the LG? And on the HTC, how many times do you really utilise the dual 5 megapixel camera for 3D images? And if you do, what are you doing with those 3D images? Who are you showing them to? Because you can't take your phone round to your, your mother-in-law's because she probably hasn't got a 3D telly. So I'd be really interested to hear your feedback and how you think 3D is evolving, whether it is too early or actually too late. Uh, whether manufacturers should be doing more. Tell me about it. Either leave a comment below, leave a video response, or comment on our blog. So until next time, thanks for watching.